Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where this four weeks, we're going to be doing the three and a bit Hunger Games movies. Oh, did they Harry Potter this series? They Harry Potter the last one, yeah. Because there were three books? Is that what we're going with? Initially, there were three books, yes. But, okay. of course, we're getting the prequel movie. I mean, initially, there was just one book, the Bible. Yeah, sure, that's right. Mm. Was that the first book? Yep. I thought it was that book, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? I hate that book, Mason. Oh, yeah? Fuck that book. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just going along with it. It's time to reveal that. I don't know what's going on. Well, I don't feel like you do very well in the 75th Hunger Games, I think Mason. I do great at the Hunger Games. I'd simply defeat all my opponents <laughs> with skill and vigour very early on. Well, that was my and question. everybody would love me, and they'd send me little gifts in little parachutes. Yeah? I wouldn't even need them. I'd just be like, thanks, on principle, thank you, but I don't need this because I defeated everyone. <laughs> I'll just stick around in this arena. Who's, I'm having a lovely time. Whose personality are you adopting for this? Because you obviously couldn't use your own. Yeah, that's very true. Because, um, mm, you know, nobody likes their YouTuber personality. I no, don't know absolutely if you know not. That. People barely tolerate it on YouTube, let alone in a real world scenario. In a, in a real game of death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to... I'd, look, you know what? I'd figure it out on the day. You probably would. I wouldn't need Lenny Kravitz <laughs> and, and bloody Woody Harrelson. I'd just be like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to spend this the preparation time just sort of, you know, eating all this nice food yep. and what have you, and then I'll just knock me in there. I'll come up with personality. Okay. I'll, you know, knock off a few guys real quick, you know. Yeah, yeah. Great, be easy. I'd run into the woods and fall off a cliff. <laughs> It's also a good option. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. It's not an option. It's just what would happen to me. Understand? I'm not choosing that. Yeah. Mm, I would probably. I'll look to, to be real, James. I would probably attempt to cross a river and just like at the at the bank of the river, I'd just like break an ankle, oh, okay. and then I'd be done. Yeah, sure. Or you'd have one wet foot. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> guys, please. I know you've, you're drawing various machetes and bows and arrows at me right now, but I got one wet sock. I'm going to deal with that first, all right? <laughs> Just let me get the one wet sock off. Exactly. Anyways, please leave a like because this week we are talking about the Hunger Games from 2012. Is this the 75th Hunger Games? I can't remember. I wrote it somewhere in here. We'll come across it again. I mean, we're doing this obviously because, uh, you know, uh, upcoming is the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Is that what it's called? The prequel? Younger Games. Oh, nice. Because they're, they're all younger. And the trailer for that starts with Jason Schwartzman going, it's me. I'm the guy. I'm the first host of the Hunger Games. That's bad writing. I agree. What do you mean the first host? What do you think's going to happen to you? <laughs> also, isn't he still? Isn't he Stanley Tucci? I think in the it's future? a different guy. It's a different it's guy. Like okay, Seventy thousand right. years. I don't know how time works in this universe, <laughs> okay, right. which is our universe. Mm. Anyways, what I think's fascinating about this one is, is that it set itself apart from so many other teen movies of this era. There are exceptions that did really well, obviously, like Harry Potter. Not another teen movie. Not another teen movie. That's a good one. Mm, American Pie. American Pie. American Pie Band Camp. Yes, yes, American yes. Pie Stifler's Mom's Adventure or whatever they're called. <laughs> sure, yeah. Hello. Twilight, which we've looked at, etc. Mm. But what do you think makes this better than, like, Divergent or The Host or Mortal Instruments City of Bones? Well, I've seen this one, so that's number one. <laughs> sure. And I haven't seen most of the others, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I would say... This is a guess. <laughs> good production values? Yep. It looks great. I'll give you that. A lot of those other ones look good. I think it's not a complicated concept. Sure, It's okay. a tried and true, let's all kill each other in an arena. And I suspect also, like, the subsequent ones also stick to that, whereas a lot of the other ones, like, there's a... Some it, of them do. I think the there's one called The Maze Runner. Yeah. And having not seen any of those, I'm pretty confident they run out of mazes by about movie one and a half. Oh, I'd love to do The Maze Runner, actually. Oh, you think you'd knock it out of the park? No, 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 I'd fall off a cliff. I mean, talk about the movies. <laughs> oh, I see, right. Yeah. Are yeah. they good? I liked the first one. I haven't seen the other ones, okay, but I, right. I'd love to come back to them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, when they do a Maze Runner prequel, <laughs> yep. just walking down a hall, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> These teens, they keep getting through this. I don't understand. <laughs> what if we put some dead I'm, ends? I, I'm the host of the first Maze Runner, <laughs> and I think we should put some corners in. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, what do you think about people's names that are slightly misspelled? Like Hey Mitch like hey or Mitch, Peter. Sure. I love it, James. Yeah, it's the I future. I think it's, it's the future. That's what would happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. When they love their world building, I think they really sell, like, the grubby outer suburbs or whatever you want to... Districts. <laughs> sure. Districts. No, no, I like to think of the outer suburbs. <laughs> yeah. Like Frankston. Exactly. Frankston's, Yuck. Frankston's on the up. You no, need to back off, all right? Yeah, I know it is. But I also love, in contrast to this, and I think this is on purpose, the gaudy, <laughs> oh, yes. the gaudy aesthetic of the inner suburbs. No, I think it's just... I think it's an accident. <laughs> I think they just ran out of money when they got to the outer districts, and they're like, 
like, uh, dress them all in sackcloth and rags. <laughs> yeah. We blew all the money on funny hairstyles and, and face paint and, and wigs and, and, and satiny suit jackets. <laughs> Here's a question for you, James. Sure. Throughout the series, do we ever see Stanley Tucci with his hair down? Because I think that would be simply stunning. Because he's got a beautiful, yeah, yeah. he's got that beautiful blue like bun on top the top. Knot, so yeah. clearly he's got a lot of hair going on. So does it ever come down? I think it's a wig. I mean, it's obviously a wig, mm. but I think it's an in-universe wig also. Oh, I see, right. Yeah, yeah. But it could still come down. Yeah. Let's think about it, though. Yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you something. Okay. Would you watch a show, a real-world show, which is Stanley Tucci and Toby Jones just doing anything? Yes, I would. I absolutely would. They could be touring Europe or yep. they could be sitting in a barn. I don't care. I would 100% Absolutely. watch that show. But they have to wear those gaudy outfits. <laughs> okay, sure. It has to be like two to three hours of hair and makeup, and then they just show up and they're like, yeah, I was I was on that show, Detectorist. It's oh, really yeah. good. Yeah, it's got Gareth from The Office. I liked it. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. fun show. Real, real nice. You yeah. Know? It's about friendship. Yeah. It's about the finding treasure, but the real treasure is fucking mates or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not fucking mates. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think I watched the yeah. Christmas special. Yeah, and then Stanley Tucci could be like, yeah, I was in a couple of Transformers. I don't know what happened in them. <laughs> it was all blue screen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we need to recap the plot of The Hunger Games? Are you- okay, let's do it. Oh, people also say it's just battle. Uh, it's just... Oh, um, it's Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Sure, uh-huh. sure. It's a million things. Yeah. This has been done a thousand times. But anyway, go on. Uh, all right. It's the future yep. of our Earth, probably. probably. Yep. And um, yep. the world's been broken up into districts. Yep. America has. Yep. What's it called? Panera? Panera New, Bread. New America. It's called P- Panera Bread. Panera I think. Bread, yeah. And, and uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother's like, I'm not having this. That's right. I'm going to be in some of this movie. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the the districts, they rebelled back in the day. Yeah. And then as punishment, the, the main the main centre city is like, we're going to hold on to Hunger Games every every 100 years. No, every year. Nice. I love yeah. that. <laughs> 100 years? Every 100 years. I don't think that would be very effective. So the thing about this is... The Hunger Games is basically they get a couple of kids from every suburb, mm. 12 or so, and they put them in an arena and the winner gets, like, a cool hat and stuff. Nice. And, and, and the them. winner's Frankston. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Anyway, go on. They seem wholly unprepared. And I know yeah. they don't have a lot of resources, mm. but, like, I think it's interesting that some uh, districts are just, like, beautiful, noble children and then some districts just psychos. Yeah. <laughs> But the way it works is yes. the more inner suburbs, the more inner you are, mm. you get resources to train. You're not technically supposed to. Okay. And they also they have the money and the time and the gaudy outfits. Mm. So that's how it basically works. It's a I don't it might be an accident, but it's kind of like a class divide. What? Yeah. Interesting. Not like a school. I, th- I thought in the future it would all be equal. Yeah, I mean, probably. Mm. But in this example, no. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, archery got big again off the back of this, right? Uh, absolutely, it would have, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, apparently, because of Katniss Everdeen, played wonderfully by Jennifer Lawrence, by the way, I think she does a really good job. This is according to a Washington Post article from 2012, that USA Archery, the national association focused on the sport, saw a 161% growth in its Facebook fans over the 15 months after this movie because of Katniss. Some people would say, uh, well, what about Hawkeye from the... The Avengers, mm. but no one's looking at the Avengers and going, yeah, that guy. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I guess he's the most like achievable in terms of abilities. There'd be a there'd be a thousand percent increase in fatalities of people attempting to build their own Iron Man suits. <laughs> yeah, <And> just <laughs> rocket boots flinging them out of their shed into a ditch or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, do you think there was an increase in sales of those uh, comedy arrows that go through your head, but they're not actually going through your head? It's just a yeah, that little band goes across your head. One hundred percent, mate. Mm, that's right. Do you think there was an increase in people? Uh, taking on elaborate cake making skills and painting themselves into rocks. Yes. That, what an incredible thing to put in a movie. Right. <laughs> My God. Also, 90% of his body is just under a, some leaves. <laughs> yeah. Just put the rest of your body under some leaves, Peter. <laughs> I laugh. I laugh when I see it, Mason. Mm. It's really funny. Yeah. Uh, how did he even, and as soon as she shows up, he's just like, yep, all right, I'm up. And he just. Days of work. How long does that even take? And he been stabbed or whatever. Yeah, he's been like, stabbed. Did he? Did he put the makeup on and then sort of hunker down for the night, or do you think he? Do you think he laid down and then he then he then he put the makeup on? He would have laid down, I think, because he was really like plastered. Into he was it. very plastered. <laughs> Lucky into they it. let him bring in a trowel. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, here's something I think this movie does well, though. Aside from that incredible scene, is that it's really good at ratcheting up the tension leading up to the Hunger Games kind of disorientated. Lenny Kravitz is like, have a good time or whatever. Mm, sure, yeah. Um, and just that, that tension and then 
like the the sound design when the you know the arena kind of opens up and everybody's running wild and stabbing each other. Yeah, all yeah, good yeah. stuff, Mason. I mm-hmm. love all of that. Sure, sure, sure. I think some would say though, it mm-hmm. took a really long time to get to that, didn't it? Sure. Those of us with shorter attention spans were like, geez, there's a lot of setting up and trying on different outfits isn't there. Yeah. There's a lot of little trips on trains isn't there. Yeah, yes, but I think you need that yeah, uh-huh. to establish the mm. universe and the characters and all of that. And you look at Jack Quaid and you go, Jack Quaid, you fucking dog. Right. You know? Uh, <laughs> Jack Quaid's in this. Yeah. Uh, I have a complete inability to recognise people until they're in like five major productions. So <laughs> sure, yeah. I had seen this before, but I had no idea he was in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he wasn't the Jack Way that we know now, obviously. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of dogs, though, mm-hmm. I think if there's one part where this movie really falls down... It's oh, I've the, got one, and I think it's a different one, but all right. Oh, mine's the mutant muscular dogs that show up at the end. Right. Now, I don't get that, right? Mm-hmm. Because, say, you're down to three or four members of your Hunger Games yes, sure. event, your mm-hmm. arena, mm-hmm. and then they're like, release the mutant dogs. <laughs> what if they kill everybody? That's. A, I mean... Do the dogs win? I mean, that's a great... You know, that's, that's, a, that's a great question, and it's can only be answered by because the plot. It's the yeah. same reason, like, uh, Squid Game works in the show and not necessarily in real life because what if everybody fell over in that first game? <laughs> what if everybody, you know, the thing where the little the thing turns and yeah. it looks at you, what if everyone just fell over Yeah. and there were no people to go to the next game? Well, you've, I guess it's You've made all then. the games for nothing. <laughs> That's right. You've baked all that honeycomb for nothing, That's basically. right. Oh, my God, but if you work there, you get to take a bunch home. You get, you get to take them home as much as you wanted. Oh, my God. Oh. You I've been a wrong. sugar coma for weeks. I love honeycomb. Mm. It's my favourite thing, Mason. But I think, though, the version of the dogs that they do here is better than in the books. Oh, by the way, it's the 74th Hunger Games. The next one's the 75th. That's why Katniss okay. has to come back. It's a whole thing. We'll talk about it next week right, 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 if we right, don't right. die. So in the book, they're reanimated contestants who have died and they mutate them into, like, dog creatures. So I think it's better than that. But I also think don't do the dogs. Would you have preferred just regular zombies? No, just don't do dogs. Don't do dogs. Okay, right. You don't need it. Yeah, okay. It's fine. I mean, the thing that I would be critical about this, and obviously the plot, Mm -hmm. but it's that it's very convenient and handy that Katniss never has to make any difficult decisions to kill anyone who's a good person. That's true. All she has to do is kill psychos. Yeah. Like, the game would go completely differently if in that opening skirmish, like, all the psychos wounded each other so severely that they all just died off over the course of the next couple of days, and then the rest of the movie (laughs) is just Katniss, like, stalking and slaughtering 12-year-old girls. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who never wanted to be in there, there in the first place. And she's like, yeah, but my district would get a lot of bread for this. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Bang. Oh, she found a gun? She found a gun, yeah. <laughs> Lady Kravitz told her it was under a rock or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, it's always just like, you know, she makes friends with a little girl yeah. and then the little girl is killed by a psycho and then she's like, well, I hope I don't... That was that was handy, wasn't it? Yeah. Very convenient. But I don't have to make any tough decisions. I don't. Don't <laughs> worry about it. That's right. Yeah, Liam Hemsworth would be upset, wouldn't he? Mm. Probably. Does she have to make more difficult decisions in later movies? Yeah, but it's more like philosophical than literal, I yeah, think. Right. A lot of it, yeah, right. Or do I have to kill Donald Sutherland? Yes. Yeah, right. And the answer is no. She kills Julianne Moore. Spoiler alert for the fourth one. Whoa. We'll be coming back. Look, I tell you one thing. If that, we're alive. Oh, I think one thing that this does do is it really makes you want to get those guys. God, get Mason. all those all those richy riches with their stupid powdered wigs and their stupid makeup and their stupid cultivated facial hair. Don't look at any old photos of me. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do look at any of them on social media. But God, you just want to you just want to see them get wrecked. Yeah. You just want them to get poisoned and narrowed and all the sorts of stuff. Oh I my God. Agree. I mean, maybe not Elizabeth Banks, but probably. But yeah, definitely. why not? I mean, she's, yeah. she's there. She's there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, you know what it's time for? What's it time for? The Hung Trivia. This is the trivia section of the show. Uh, here we go. Whilst horsing around on set, Jennifer Lawrence accidentally kicked Josh Hutchinson in the head, knocking him out and resulting in a concussion. Whoa, that's yeah. Peter? That's Peter. Okay. Yeah. Well, they probably just took advantage of that. That The, the scene with the, with the makeup's probably not in the book. They probably just... She knocked him out and they just went... You know, fun prank. Let's roll him into a ditch and put some weird makeup on him. Bit of fun. Bit it of fun. <laughs> Woody Harrelson is a vegan. What is, what is Jennifer Lawrence part horse? Roundhouse kicking people in the head. She seems like a kind of horse girl energy. You get a bit of that? That's not a criticism. That's I, a compliment. I, yeah, but I know. But I don't think that g- gives you the ability. <laughs> No? No, I don't think... I thought that's how it works. I don't think skill at equestrian pursuits enables you to kick people in the head horse style. Okay, that might be true. Uh, We might look it up after the show. Okay. But anyways, Woody Harrelson is a vegan in real life. So in the scenes where Haymitch is seen eating, he's either eating a dessert or vegetables or just drinks. That's pretty 
cool. I agree. Mm. During a New York Magazine interview, Wes Bentley said that the extremely unusual beard he wore as Sen- Senka, I don't, whatever his name, Seneca? Wes Bentley. Wes Bentley was styled from his own real beard, not created from applied pieces or extra hair. Well, there you go. Very impressive. Mm. Unlike Woody Harrelson, his stupid wig, am I right? <laughs> That barefoot bastard. Put yeah. some shoes on, you put animal. Some, put some shoes on, clean up your act, <laughs> tuck your shirt in. Tuck your shirt in, mate. God. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence is actually left-handed in real life. but in the Left-handed in real life. Are you? Yeah. Yuck. But in the movie, it appears... It is yuck. <laughs> but in the movie, it appears that she's right-handed because she had to learn to do everything with her right hand, including shooting with a bow and arrow. Well, that's what you have to do when you're a left-hander. But why not just be, like, left-handed? It's yeah, fine, I don't think right? anybody would know. Didn't no. they switch Ron Perlman for Hellboy? Like, they... No, they were going to, I think. Okay. But then he learned to do... Because Hellboy's... This is left hand erasure. It is, isn't it? Yeah, because Hellboy has a right hand of doom. So they yeah. were like, well, my, how, cause he, how's he going to fire a gun with his left hand? But he learned to do it. He learned to use his other hand. Because he was paid a lot of to money. To hold the gun, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the answer there is, uh, if Katniss is right hand in the book, the fans would notice. Fair enough. No. Second unit director Steven Soderbergh shot much of the District 11 riot scenes because he's friends with the director. Steven Soderbergh, director of Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, and 12. Remake, not the original. No. Not the original. Not the ri- yuck, yuck. We have a video. Yuck. Uh, and here's some other names who went for the role. Emma Roberts, Chloe Grace Moretz, Mary Mouser, Hayley Steinfeld. Mary Mouser? Yeah. Okay. Abigail Breslin, Lindsay Fonseca, Saoirse Ronan, Emily Browning, Australia's own. Oh, yeah. Brie Larson and Shailene Woodley. Some of these people got their own teen uh, dystopian movies, didn't, <laughs> they, did, they? didn't they? Yeah, there's they a few like, of them in here. Listen, we, you, you weren't right for this role, but we've got so many of yeah. these. Just pick one and you can have it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the big one. We're very concerned about the quality of that one. Any of those others, just say it. Yeah, we fine. don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Do it in your own backyard. We don't care. We won't finish it. We yeah. might do two. That's right. More likely one. Yeah, yeah. Divergent? What's that one about? I don't know. You can have it. <laughs> just make up your own meaning for it. <laughs> now, to talk uh, return on this, my goodness, Mason, on a budget of $78 million, it made 694 Huge hit, Mason. That's a big return. Absolutely. And I think we should do a section every week called Getting Paid. Because I think it's interesting <laughs> to know how much Jennifer Lawrence gets paid for each of these movies. So for this one, she was paid the high, high fee of five hundred thousand oh, dollars. That's low. But she gets well. I mean, it's not low for. <laughs> <laughs> it's low We're for in this. Hollywood mode, right? Yeah, now. yeah, 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 yeah. Considering what it made, but there's going to be a big update in the following weeks, Mason. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, so next week we're coming back to the Hunger Games. Do another Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence. Nice. Still so hungry. Mm. Hunger Games 2. Ooh, a bit peckish. Yeah, a bit peckish. Still a bit peckish mm. on account of the inequality. <laughs> yeah, which may have been an accident. I don't know whether they meant to put Might that have been. Yeah. yeah. But if you do want to see that early, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where all the caravan of garbages go up there early. Ben and Lawrence, they get the edit done. They do a good job, don't they, Mason? They do do a good job. Yeah. Are you trying to convince yourself? It sounded no. like that's what was happening. You were, you were doing a big thumbs down. I was not. <laughs> I was doing thumbs right in the middle, and then afterwards I would have turned them to thumbs up. I don't believe you. Well. <laughs> Anyways, they got there early, but there's also bonus movie commentaries. There's video game Let's Plays. There's bonus podcasts. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that actually comes out there on Sunday as opposed to Monday. If you do want to check that out, that's on YouTube, Spotify, and all of that. Or you can just subscribe here for whatever's happening when it happens. Videos. Videos. Uh, How would you survive the Hunger Games? You know, that's a great you know call Mason to action. and I's methods. Yeah, be the best. Yeah. Bearing in mind you can't do that. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're already doing it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what would your murder weapon of choice to kill a bunch of kids? Yeah. What would it be? Mm. We're going to call the police on all of you. <laughs> all right, okay, goodbye. bye.